want to read a portion of Luke's gospel pertaining to what we're about here. This is in Luke chapter 22, if you want to follow in your Bibles. And it has to do with this specific hour. Think about all the years that had gone by with the Passover, with the celebration of it, the slaying of the Passover lamb. All that coming down to this one hour when Christ should lay down his life. And Luke chapter 22, verse 14 says, And when the hour was come, we know that it was according to the fullness of the times that God sent forth his son, but down to this one hour detail purpose he was to be the lamb slain on the Passover and that's what was approaching here so when the hour was come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him and he said unto them with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer of all the Passovers that had come and gone in the history up to now, it was this one Passover that our Lord desired to eat with them. You say, why this Passover? Well, this was to be the last. The word Passover means to pass over. And it was a reminder of what God did there in Egypt where they took the blood of that Passover lamb and put it on the lentils of their doorposts of their houses. And when the death angel passed by, God said, "Where when I see the blood, I'll pass by. I'll pass over you. So it means to be passed over in judgment. And that's why Christ is the Passover lamb. God didn't just look the other way with regard to the sin of his people, but Death had to pass upon those that Christ came to save. It didn't just put them apart and say, okay, you're saved. No, it took his death. And so he's describing his desire to eat that Passover because that would be the last of the types and pictures. He being the true Passover. And he says there in verse 16, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now when he said until it be fulfilled, it doesn't mean, okay, after that we're going to go back and eat it again. No, he's showing the fulfillment of it. I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. What he's saying is this would be the last. And it was. When we talk about the kingdom of God, when was the kingdom of God established? Now, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, there's only one foundation that's ever been laid, and that is Christ Jesus. It was in his shed blood. That's why he's the chief cornerstone. People argue today and mock that you would emphasize the timing of justification. It's become, a, it's become a mocking term out there right now. Oh, you're saying that it's at the cross only? Yep. Because all before time, God looked down to that time. In the fullness of the time, God sent forth his son. When he had by himself. When? Those are all time words. So when people say, well, you, you can't make an issue of the time and adjust, yes, you do. You better. Because this was it. It all came down to this right here. Being what? Fulfilled. That's when it was fulfilled. In the death of the Lamb. Otherwise there would be no justification. There would be no reconciliation. There would be no salvation. And I dare say if the Spirit has ever opened your eyes to Christ, that's where he's caused you to look. You're not looking back before time and trying to see if your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. And you're certainly not looking to your faith at the moment when you believe, oh, well, that's when I was justified. No. If the Lord caused you to know of Christ, your eyes were open. The Spirit always draws eyes of sinners to the Lord Jesus Christ in his death. That's the gospel. That's the faith 
once delivered unto the saints. It's always in connection with Christ and his finished work. That's what's vital about what we're doing right here. If it's not that vital, then go ahead and put the cup down and throw the bread away. Sit there and look into space. Because that's about all the hope you'd have. Nothing. But if we hold this in our hand, these elements, it's because of who it has to do with. It has to do with his body, unleavened without sin, but it has to do with his shed blood represented here in this cup. And that's all our salvation. When we partake, it's not in this bread or this cup, but it's in who it represents. And so it says there, he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Right after his resurrection, you find him eating and drinking with his disciples. So what does that tell you? Yeah. The kingdom of God must be come. And it is. Why? Because it came in his death and his resurrection. The proof that God had, by his death, justified his people was in that he raised it from the grave. So that's our rejoicing. And then he took the bread gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me that's what this is all about remembering Christ and his death and don't let this trip you up because right after the bread it says in verse 20 likewise also the cup after supper so you're like, wait a minute did he pass it twice yeah well, the one time he passed it and they drank that was as the Passover cup it was still the Passover cup. But now, when he passed the cup, he says, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Therefore, it was no longer to be simply a symbol, but it would represent his true shed blood unto death that was shed for many. The New Testament, the Old Testament and the New, testament is a will and the names of those in the testament are named just like we saw with the names on the high priest shoulders and breastplate specific names for whom Christ paid the debt and he says which is shed for you shed for those that the father had given so as we partake that's what we're remembering it's a memorial every time we Partake of the Lord's table as a memorial service, remembering Him. But you can't remember someone you've never known. And uh, that's why it's specific to those that the Lord has taught by His grace and by His Spirit. So let's thank Him and then we'll partake. Gracious Father, how precious is Your Word as it sets Christ forth. I pray that as we partake, that we would do so with measure of awe, considering what these emblems represent, who they represent, and that we remember your blessed Son coming in the flesh, and yet without sin, and laying down his life as a representative of that people that you gave him. Therein is our hope, our eternal security and salvation on who he is and what he accomplished. Thanks as we partake in his precious name. Amen.